To make the hub for my wheels, I start with a quarter inch stock, and I've tried softwood such as poplar, hardwood as in oak, I tried acrylic, and I've tried brass, and you can see some of each of those here. They all have advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I want to say right off the bat that I just do this by eye. You could uh, do a lot of measurements and come up with a much more consistent product. You can see that the width of my hubs is very different. Let's start off first with about a three inch length of whatever material you choose chucked into your drill. Let's assume that you have a flush end. What I want to do first is I want to create a taper <clears throat> from the center portion of the hub where the spokes go into the tenons, uh, the mortise joints, and goes out to the hub band. And normally this is a convex curve, but I don't have anything that's going to create a profile like that. So I'm going to use a concave curve using a round file. And let's hope that no one notices. So what I want to first do is just start rotating my, my stock and start to carve that round, half round profile into the, into the hub. I'd say the depth of my, my groove is about a third of the material. I've discovered that I like to have a little more gentle slope on my curved profile. So the way that I do that is I'll, I'll turn my file to an angle and it'll broaden that, broaden that trough. So there we have one side. Now, whatever the width of your mortise is, uh, and I use about a hundred thousandths, uh, about the width of my wheel tread, I want to move over a little bit and then we'll create the other uh, hub ring depression. So again, just start that off. Here's where you could be much more precise. You could lay out some layout lines for the width of the trough and the width of your uh, mortise joints, but I'm just freehanding it. So again, I have the trough at the depth I want here. Now I'm going to just uh, taper the profile a little. And because often the inner box hub and the outer bearing hub were uh, different profiles, I don't worry so much about this. Before we take this off, what we want to do now is we want to find our center point and we want to uh, drill at least a guide hole for our axles later. I don't want to project my hole into the stock here in case I'm off center. So I'm just going to find out how deep I can go and uh, hold my finger there and then we'll run that down the center of this piece. Now since this was the first hub off of this stock, we have this end here that is not useful to us. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut that off. And that's a, a piece of waste that you'll throw away. While I have it here, I'm going to just make sure that this end gets dressed so that it's square. Now we'll cut the other one off. Cut down the other hub ring depression.
and there's our finished hub. The problem with the poplar is it, it breaks apart a little and you'll get uh, wavy lines where your tenon joints are. The oak being a little bit harder, the lines were a little crisper. For the acrylic, very crisp lines. The problem is the acrylic warms up quickly on your file or your saw and melts instead of cuts, so you have to take a lot slower run at it. And the brass, very fine lines, nice tapers. It's just, uh, it is metal. It's harder to work with and it's a little more expensive. For the wheels, an alternate technique for creating the spoked wheel is to create a, a metal rim and then some material to represent the fellows uh, on the inside. And the fellows are the wooden part of the wheel that the, uh, holds the mortise that the spokes go into. So this second technique that I'm using, I've started with some copper pipe. This happens to be one inch, which in 148th scale represents a 48 inch wheel. It's a little large, uh, but I think I'm gonna go with it for now for its ease. What I need to do is I need to cut a ring of material off this brass pipe. And I've settled just for ease on treads that are one-tenth of an inch or a hundred thousandths. So what I'll do is I'll come with my caliper and I will scribe a line one hundred thousandths in from the edge as my guideline. And with that scribed guideline there, I've used a couple of techniques to cut this pipe. One of them is I've used a, a pipe cutter. And it's okay, except you have to find a pipe cutter that's got a very narrow shelf on it because this side of the blade, there's not much material there. So uh, some of the small micro cutters seem to work pretty well. The disadvantage of those is it cuts a V-shaped groove. So there's, it's difficult to see here perhaps, but there's an angled taper on the side. I found what I had to do is I had to account for that and increase the width of my cut a little bit so that when I take this and file it down, I still have my 100 thousandths tread width. The other way to do it is with a razor saw or a hacksaw. Using a razor saw, this is a, a, a tedious and time-consuming way to go. The reason I like it is the, the kerf that's coming out of the, the material is smaller and I can uh, have a lot of control. It's straighter. Uh, I haven't tried cutting it with a big hacksaw yet, but the thing that you don't want to do, especially with the uh, circular pipe cutter, is press so hard that you cause the ring to go out of round. That'll just cause you all kinds of problems later, so take your time. Be gentle. Don't compress the material. Once we have our ring of material, we now need to put something on the inside for the fellows. And what I'm using is some 60 thousandths styrene. I think it's a nice compromise. Uh, 80 thousandths might represent a thicker fellow, but it's also gonna be difficult to, uh, to, to cut and to form. So what I do then is I take the, uh, again, that 100 thousandths width and I scribe it onto my 60 thousandths thick styrene. And I'm gonna cut a strip that's long enough to go around the inside of this rim. Now, if you go back to your simple math, you realize that the a one inch circle, the circumference is two pi r. In other words, two times the radius times pi, three point, or excuse me, yeah, two pi r. Two times pi times the radius. Uh, my radius would be 12 inches. It comes out to be about three inches, 3.14 inches worth of material I'll need. So 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut off my one hundred thousandths thick piece of sixty thousand styrene. I don't like to snap it off at this point because the snap reveal, leaves a, a rough edge. And be sure that your blade is perpendicular here so that your next piece of material has perpendicular edges. With that cut, I now want to pre-bend this styrene. So what I do is I take my X-Acto knife and I'll, I'll hold the end of the material and then I wrap it around the X-Acto knife. And this is a small number 11 blade. But having wrapped that around, that pre-stresses this plastic so that I'll be able to form it easier. And you'll notice that here on either end, I have a, a section where there is no bend. It's still straight. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut off that straight end. I'm going to get back into the curved profile and make as perpendicular a cut as I can. Now with our ring ready to go, I'm going to press that down inside the ring, making sure that it's as expanded as much as I can get it. I want it back against all the edges. And I'm going to look at where those two pieces cross over. I want to give myself plenty of room here. I'm going to make some micro trimmings later. Let's get rid of that piece. So now as I start to look at this, I want these two joints to fall right on top of each other. And I'm looking at the material here and I see I can remove, I'm going to take about three quarters of the material that I needed to remove. And sure enough, it just slid into place. You, if you can see my joint there, there is a hairline that I'm not satisfied with. I would probably recut this piece, but for this video, I, I'm going to leave it. You can do better. You can get this as tight as you can. Now what we need to do is we need to take that plastic back out of the rim and we need to cut the holes for our spokes. So I don't want to be too tough on this material, but I do want to get it laid out. So what I have here is I have a fairly heavy file that I will weigh it down with. And I'm going to take a measurement of its length. So with the material flattened back out, I can measure the length of this piece. And I get a measurement for mine of 3.075 inches. So the measured distance of my fellows was 3.057. What we want to do now is decide how many spokes do we want on our wheel. I'm going to make this one a 14 spoke wheel. So what we want to do now is we want to take that length and divide it into 14 parts. Here's the way that I'm going to do it. I'm going to lay out my caliper that distance and I'm going to use my X-Acto knife to mark the spot where the mortise would go for the spoke. And experience has taught me that I need to account for the thickness of the X-Acto blade. The X-Acto blades are 0 0.02 inches wide. I'm working out at the tip where it's a little narrower and I find that if I account for the blade as being 0 0.015 that works well. So now I take my 0 0.015 and I multiply it times the 14 marks I'm going to have and I come up with a correction factor of 0.21 to account for the width of my blade. Subtracting that 0.21 from the length of the overall piece of plastic 
brings us down to 3.054. Divide that into 14 equal parts, and it means that the distance between each spoke will be 0.218. So I'm, I'll put that into my caliper. 0.218. So now I'll go ahead and I will mark those distances off on my piece. Don't make these marks with this exacto plate too long or you'll cut it off. So I've gone and cut myself a new piece of 3.075 stock to replace the one that I cut through. We'll set that aside. We'll start the process over. So I want to go to my 0.218 or 0.218 as my interspoke distance. I'll mark that first spoke distance. Now we'll drill the holes. So now with the holes drilled, let's go ahead and test fit my new piece. The original piece would have fit just right, but I'm sure we're going to have to make a little adjustment on this one. Fits just right. It's at this point that you can go ahead and secure the fellows into the rim and Make sure that it's centered widthwise, because there might be a little bit of difference between them. But I'm going to go ahead and super glue that, and then we'll come back. So try as I might, the uh, wheels are not, they don't have the same rim thickness as they do the fellows thickness, the wood thickness. So once it's secure, I'll take that and I'll rub it on a flat file to reduce the uh, thickness of either the rim copper or the fellows plastic so that they're equal and flush and they look good. The other thing that you can do is you can dress the tread of the wheel at this point by working your way around to take off any irregularities on the tread. So there we go. We have now have our four wheels for our wagon. Let's go ahead and cut some spokes. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and figure out how long our spokes need to be. What we're going to do is we're going to take the radius, the inside radius of the rim, not of the fellows. We're going to take that inside diameter and we're going to subtract from it the diameter of our hub. I had my old piece of uh, one inch pipe around and measuring the inside diameter of that, it was 1.06 inches. My hub is 0 0.250 inches. If I subtract that, that gives me 0 0.81 inches for the whole length of two spokes. Divide that in half, and we get a 0 0.405 inches is how long each of our spokes needs to be. So I'm going to set my caliper to point four zero five 
and I'm going to cut 14 spokes. I'll see you back here in just a few minutes. With 14 spokes cut, I'm now going to super glue them into their holes, the mortise holes, on the fellows. I'll make sure that each one of them is perpendicular to the wheel tread before I move on to the next one. So this will be time consuming. Join me in 13 more spokes. Well, all the spokes are in my wheel. I can see just by eyeball fit that some of my spokes are not quite the length that they needed to be and that the hole for the hub is smaller than the hub itself. So I'm going to give this overnight to harden and then I'll come back and with my circular file I'll go ahead and fine-tune the length of each of those spokes and we'll get that hub in place. One of the things that I'm going to do while we cement the hub, I've put a quarter inch hole inside of this piece of styrene which is the diameter of my hub. I'll go ahead and lay the hub in there and when we get things sized correctly that wheel should just slide right down over the hub and then it should rest roughly with the spokes going into the, the mortise joints on the hub. So to adjust the length of the spokes, I'm worried because the spoke that I'm <coughs> filing is the free end of the spoke. So what I'm going to do is try and hold this construct together by putting it inside masking tape. And I'll do that on both sides. I want to find... Now it's time to remove the masking tape and see what damage I've done to the spokes inside the fellows. So, we only lost one spoke. The wheel now sits nicely over the hub. Here's where I can go ahead and secure the hub, replace the spoke. And the way that I'm gonna secure mine is I'm just gonna put some uh, dilute super glue around this portion. Let it soak into these Folks, and I'll join you back here in a minute. With my broken spoke repositioned, now it's just time to put in some super glue. So I'm just going to use the tip of a small piece of wood and touch the joint between the hub and the spoke. This is the point in time where you can readjust the position of the spokes. Make sure that they're perpendicular. I'm also going to come out here and just put a, a spot of super glue on each of the spokes where it enters the fellows just to secure that again because we roughed those joints up during the filing. And there we have it, except for the paint shop.
we have a completed wheel. And as a comparison, that wheel compared to my first attempt using PVC pipe, uh, there's the two, there's the two products. Thank you for joining me for this episode of uh, generic horse-drawn wagon and O-scale. Next, I think we'll be looking at the horse uh, harnesses and how they attach to the hitch.